Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Duke Fitzpatrick Institute for Photonics International Day of Light. My name is Vanessa Kubel Garcia, and I am part of Dr. Tuan Rodin's research group here at Duke. And our lab studies nanoscience and the uses of nanoparticles. And nanoscience is the study of very, very, very tiny materials. And fun fact, the COVID-19 vaccine actually utilizes a lipid-based nanoparticle. In other words, a small, small capsule of fat. And today I will be walking you through uh, a demonstration using light and scanning electron microscopes using samples that were provided to us by the Boys and Girls Club here in Durham. And the middle school students have provided us with a variety of samples and I'll be uh, analyzing three of them today in the demonstration. And first, I would like to talk to you about how um, these microscopes work. Here at uh, Duke University, we have the Shared Materials Instrumentation Facility that has a variety of equipment and microscopes that scientists use in their research. And the electron microscopes help us see um, things that we can't normally see with our eye. So our eye is limited um, in the things we can visualize. Of course, we can see things on the order of several meters. And for reference, a meter is about three feet. But when it gets down to millimeters, um, we can see things that are small, like fibers, dust, or our hair. But anything smaller than that, we need your standard light microscope that you may have used in your science classes. So light microscopes help us see things that make us sick, like bacteria and pathogens. Um, and also the thickness of our hair, which we will actually be looking at today, and things like our blood cells. Of course, in this universe, there are, th there are things that are much smaller than that. And for that, we need more powerful microscopes known as electron microscopes. And those help us look at things like viruses, the DNA found in our cells, proteins, molecules, and atoms. So we talked about electron microscopes, but what exactly is an electron? So electrons are on the outside of atoms and they're negatively charged. And we're able to move them through wires and circuits to generate the electricity that powers our devices like our computers and our phones. And most importantly, they're very tiny. So they're smaller than the wavelength of light. So we can see things that are even smaller and we can see them in much better detail or resolution. So here at the Shared Materials Instrument Facility, or SMIF, there are many microscopes. There's light microscopes, scanning electron microscopes, and transmission electron microscopes. And today we'll be um, using the first two. So how is an electron microscope different than a light microscope? Well, in a light microscope, the source of illumination is a lamp that generates uh, photons or packets of light. And in the scanning electron microscope, um, the source that per helps us see the image are electrons found in a filament. And then to um, direct the light to our sample, in both we need some type of mechanism. So in the light microscope, we use lenses that focus the light. And in the scanning electron microscope, we use electromagnets that direct the path of the electrons onto our sample. And because electron microscopes require electrons, the material that's analyzed or looked at must be conductive. So to make our samples conductive, here at Duke, we coat them in gold using a sputter. And a sputter is this instrument shown here in the middle, and it has this mesh at the top made out of gold. And here we, we coated this uh, insect in gold. And how we do this is by pushing gas, in this case, argon gas, into the chamber. So you can think of the gas as a bag of popcorn and the chamber as a microwave. So when you put popcorn in a microwave, um, it heats up and it, the kernels move um, 
everywhere as they are turned into your fluffy popcorn. Well, here, when the argon atoms in the gas are energized, they turn into this plasma that you see here glowing in purple. And so these energized argon atoms hit the gold mesh and knock off the gold atoms onto the sample. Similar is how a bag of popcorn, the popcorn goes everywhere, knocking onto the sides of the bag. So then the sample is coated in gold. And I've actually already coated our samples for today. So I will show you what our samples look like before coating and after coating. And I'll show you the two microscopes we'll be working with. So this right here is our light microscope. And here are our three samples. And we're going to turn on the light microscope so we can see. And over here, we have our scanning electron microscope. It's this blue machine. And our samples are inside of this chamber. And our samples are on top of this disc right here. And you can see that they are coated in gold already. So to get the microscope working, we close our chamber and we can move our sample in different directions using these knobs and turn on the vacuum. And if we turn the vacuum, I'm sure it can back up because the electrons can be much better if we need to move that vacuum. So now we're going to analyze our three samples using the light microscope. So this software here is, um, is showing you the light microscope. It has a camera on one of the eyepieces of the microscope. So we're looking at the piece of paper um, from an old book. And right now we're out of focus. So if I move the objective by turning a knob, here we can see the paper much more defined. And we can see some of the fibers that the paper is made out of. But of course, we can't get down to the uh, smaller structures. Similarly, if we look at our second sample, and right now, I'm, I'm fancier microscopes actually have um, automatic stages you can move. And here, I'm moving it manually with my hand. So this is the piece of wall. And again, I have to adjust the focus by moving the objective. All right, and on this piece of wall, we can see it's been painted the color white, and we can see some of the grains and texture of the wall. And the last sample we're looking at is a piece of hair. So we can see some of the, um, see that this piece of hair is curly. Let me see if I can show you more of it. Yep, so right here, you can see that it's curly. We see that it's a brown color. But with this light microscope, we really can't see any more than just like the general structure of our samples. So we're going to switch over to the scanning electron microscope and see what we see with that more powerful microscope. The first sample we're looking at here is the piece of paper from an old book that our middle school student found on the ground. And we are analyzing it right now with our scanning electron microscope. And this brings up this software here. And this software controls the microscope. So if you remember the light microscope, I was manually moving everything and I was showing you the images. Well, here to focus um, and to increase our magnification, or in other words, zoom in like you would on a camera, um, we use these mag magnification buttons. And we also have buttons to adjust how bright the image is, the contrast. And we also have a nifty scale bar here at the bottom. So this scale bar tells us how big this 
images in real life. So this scale bar right now shows that it's at one millimeter. So for example, an ant that you would find outside is five millimeters long. And the image we're looking at right here, according to the scale bar is one millimeter. So the piece of paper here, you can see um, not only the fibers on the exterior, but we can also see more of the cellulose fibers here, which is something we couldn't see with the light microscope. And if we increase magnification, we can see them in much finer detail. So you can see the separations between them where they overlap. And because this is paper um, and it's already been condensed down and the cellulose is packed, we see it like this. But if this was um, a piece of bark or a piece of tree, we would be able to see the cells. And we can zoom out some more and we can move the sample by adjusting the stage. So here we can move right and we can see more of this piece of paper. And you would never think a piece of paper would look this cool under a microscope with all these different patterns. And so this is our first sample. On the screen right now, we have our second sample, which is the piece of wall. And right now we're 60 times magnified. On the light microscope, when I showed you the samples, we were twice or 2x uh, magnification. So right now we're 30 times more magnified than previously. We can see here our sample. And then back here, you're probably wondering what this is with these holes. So this is a uh, carbon uh, tape that's uh, sticky on both sides. So it can stick to our spun sample holder and to our sample itself. And both of them actually get coated when we put them in the sputter. And the gold coating is around 10 nanometers. So a nanometer is a millionth of a, of a millimeter. And for reference, um, your DNA, if you measure it across the skinny side, it's at 2.5 nanometers. So this is what the piece of wall looks like under 60X magnification. So if we use our microscope um, to magnify much more, so right now we're 800 or even like 1,000 times magnified, we can autofocus. And so it's really nice that the instrument or machine and our microscope um, auto focuses. So here we can see the paint pigments that are on this piece of wall or drywall. And we can see how they dry um, onto the sample. And they have this really cool structure where they're cubic and they're all these different shapes. They say, that watching paint dry is really boring, but I really like looking at this paint picture. If you looked, if you showed this to me um, out of the blue, I would not have been able to tell you that this was paint. And here, the nice thing about the software is that we can also save our images. And so this captures the image kind of like a camera would when you click on the capture button or the uh, take button. So here it's capturing the image and it looks much better than the live version. And we can see a lot more detailed structure and part of our hair. And here we can save it. So this is uh, our last sample. And with the SEM, you can analyze a variety of samples as long as they're dry and not wet um, because they have to be dry to go into the microscope. So you could look at leaves, insects, flowers, basically anything you can find in nature, a spider's web, um, a piece of rock or a piece of dirt. Um, and Now that we've 
analyze our image. We've zoomed in and out using the ma magnification. We can take a picture of our image that we can save and look at later. So by pressing the save button, it's similar to what you do on a camera when you press on the capture or the take button and it takes your image. And in this case, once it um, takes the image, it compiles all those fast scans you were seeing earlier. So that's why this looks a lot better than the live image. And so you can see more of the structures and uh, parts of our hair and what I was talking about with these more scale-like looking structures. And with spinning electron microscopy, you can actually look at um, more of a very, diverse set of samples, as long as they're dry and not wet, because they need to be dry to go into the microscope. So you could look at anything you can find, like leaves, insects, flowers, rocks, dirt, um, and things that you can find on um, inside too, like pencil shavings um, and rubber or plastic. So these are all the images we're taking today. And these are some of the samples that were um, submitted to us. Thank you so much to everyone who joined the seminar. Um, I encourage you to stick around for the other demonstrations. And if you have any questions, I will be here. And thank you so much for coming.